We're going to be in the book of Acts, the 16th chapter, but tonight we're going to talk about some things that might rub you the wrong way. Look at the person sitting next to you and say, don't get mad. Okay, because it, it might rub you the wrong way, but, but as long as it's in the word of God and it helps protect our families and protect ourselves, that, then we got to be okay with it. See, because I'm, I'm not here hoping that you fall in love with me. I'm hoping you learn how to protect your family and yourself against the enemy. And so I, I want us to look in the book of Acts, 16th chapter, uh, verses 16 through 18. And, and then we're going to kind of unpack it and I'll read a few other scriptures as well. So now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune-telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are servants of the Most High, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But I like this part, because Paul at this point sounds kind of like myself. Paul greatly annoyed in other words, Paul was ticked off. He got tired of it. And he turned and he said to the spirit. Notice he said to the spirit. He didn't say to the girl. He said to the spirit. He said, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out of her that very hour. Now, so in this passage, Paul is dealing with a spirit of divination. And it's, it's basically the spirit of being able to foretell the future. Uh, tell what's going to happen by some spiritual means. You know, I've never understood. There, there's, I think there's one on 148 and there's a fortune teller and said, there's a sign there and it says something about ring doorbell or something when you get there. And I'm like, well, if you're a fortune teller, you ought to know I'm here. In fact, you ought to know I'm coming. Here's the thing we have to understand. There's only one of two places that you can get spiritual power. It's either from the kingdom of God, it's, it's either from him, or it's Satan's kingdom. There, are, there isn't a third way. There's only two places. And, and so here's a slave girl. She has this spirit of divination, and, and that's not of God. Okay? Let, let me help you. I hope I haven't hurt too many of you yet, but, but God is against divination. He is against that. He, he, you're trying to find out. When we try to find out what's going on uh, or what's going to happen without consulting him, he, he doesn't like that. See, because we need to consult God and, and talk to him. And, and what she was saying, though, the thing is, if we notice, what she was talking about was correct. She, she, wasn't be, she was telling that they were coming and, and they were going to do great things, that they were men of God and they come to proclaim salvation. And so what she talked about was correct. And, and Paul lets it go on for a little bit. He, he's like, okay. But, but it finally got to him. He gets mad and he turns around and he says, come out of her, that you that's working in her, get, get away from her. Because here's the thing, and I got to thinking about this. Paul didn't want Satan to be his forerunner. Okay, I don't want Satan to announce me coming. Right? I, I don't want nothing to do with him. I, I, don't want, I don't want that. And so I think Paul said, hey, wait a minute. I, I don't want you be the one to announce that I'm coming. I don't want, I don't want you leading the way. I, I don't need you to do that. Now, again, here we are tonight, and we're some 2,000 years removed from this story uh, that I just read. And, and in our Western culture, we've pretty much relegated witchcraft to, to just little books or fairy tales. But hear me, witchcraft is real. And yeah, I'm doing it around this season for a purpose. It, it's real. And again, I've already pre-warned you. I said, we're going to go some places. And, and, and so just get ready. Just, again, know that I love you, but know that I, I am trying to help you have self-defense. I'm, I'm trying to help you and your family. And so the word of God is clear. God is against witchcraft. He, he's against it. He's against fortune tellers. He's against palm readers. He's against, he's against soothsayers, hypnotists. He's against those things. 
God is against those things. God is against soothsayers because again, and don't miss this, they will put you in a place where your mind is totally without guard and when your mind gets to the place without guard, that's when the enemy can step in. And so God says, I'm I'm against that. I don't want you doing that. And, And so we have to understand, the devil is a legalist. Okay, don't miss this. He's looking for any legal ground that he can use to get inside, uh, whether it be you or your family. He's wanting, he's wanting to find a way that he can penetrate your family. If you allow something in your house, man, it's quiet. If you're a person who loves horoscope, and you read it every day to guide your life. You, hear your pastor, you have just given devil, the devil the ground to come in. Right. Right. <laughs> wow. It, it, it blows my mind. When it, it doesn't blow my mind when I see the world, but when Christians dabble in the things that the word of God is totally against. And, and I see it all the time. They, they just mess around with that stuff. I, I'll go a step farther. I might as well, since I'm, you know, it's kind of once you step in it, you might as well just go on and step in it. And so I'm going to go on and just step in it. it, 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 it the, these movies and television programs <laughs> that are about witchcraft and wizardry. I'm, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help your family. These programs, all, all this thing. That, uh, and you say, Pastor, it's all fantasy. It's no big deal. And, and what happens is the church puts these blinders on and they say, well, it's just all for fun. But hear me tonight. The devil is laughing like crazy because we have allowed him room in our lives. And we have said, you know what? Here's some legal ground that you can come and stand on because I've now opened the door and, and I'm giving you a place to come in and come into my family. When you open yourself up by watching occultic movies and bringing them into your house, you know what? You have just invited the powers of darkness to come into your home. And guess what? They're going to stay there till you get rid of them. I might need an escort to my truck tonight. Now, I know you say, well, this was something relevant that you should, you know, was taught years ago. And I get that. And it's really not for today. But think about it. If Jesus knew that they were there and the apostles knew that they were there, and if they believed that these things were dangerous and come against them, then why is it that the church says, well, it's really not that big a deal. It's all for fun. They say it really doesn't matter what you watch. It doesn't matter what you read. It doesn't matter what you do. It'll all be okay. Hear me tonight. It's not okay. I'm talking about self-defense. I'm talking about don't open that door. Because once you open that door, it's hard to ever get that door closed again. And and so Strong's Concordance defines witchcraft as this. And don't jump to conclusions. Let me read it and then I'll talk to you. It says medication, magic, sorcery, a poisoner. Now, let me rush to say Medication is not talking about an aspirin. Okay, it's not medicine you take. It's not talking about that. I'm not one that says, oh, don't take medicine. I'm, I'm not. I, I take it. I, I'm not saying that. That's not what it's talking about. It, it's talking about the whole process of what they did. And, and, and if someone, think about this, if someone were to hand you something and they said, well, uh, you know, I think it could be poisonous, you know what, we would never take it. Well, I'm not really sure, but I think it might be. We would say, I don't want anything to do with it. And, and, and yet every day, if we're not careful, we allow poison into our home. And we don't even realize it. What, what about some of the cartoons nowadays? Have y'all seen cartoons nowadays? I've seen some of those cartoons and it blows me away that these kids are watching. It's, it's crazy. And so parents, we got to be wise. We need to, we need to be careful. We need to be checking what they're watching. We don't need to just say, here's an iPad, watch whatever you want. I don't know if you know this or not, but you can get into some things. 
And just because, just because it's a common, I, I mean, sometimes the grandkids will be over and I don't even try anymore, but before I just turn and, and it was a comedy and I, or comic and I thought, well, it's fine. And you turn it on and within a few seconds, it's like, holy smokes. And so you got to be careful. You got to say, hey, wait a minute, we can't do this. We, we've got to be careful. We've got to check out what they're doing. And you say, why? Because your child is being inundated with stuff that is bringing destruction into their life. The thing that used to not be normal five years ago, now they're trying to push it on them because they're saying, hey, that's just how you ought to be. That's just a normal thing. And guess what? As a parent, it is our responsibility to say, oh, no, I'm going to shut that thing off. You don't need to watch that certain thing. You say, why do you care? Because it will bring destruction into your life. And if you pursue it long enough, you will end up walking away from the things of God. I've seen that happen. You will walk away from the things of God. And so here's what I'm talking about. The Bible says this, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And so as Christians, we sit around, we don't really think about it. And, and from time to time, I'll do this, especially around this time of the year, talk about witchcraft and people say, I'm, I'm really not sure about it. You know what? We have to make a choice. We have to realize that it can bring destruction. You flip something on that TV and it's, it's satanic. Guess what you just did? You gave the enemy an inroad. And you say, I don't believe it. I'm trying to help you. You say, but I like it. Then you need to ask God to help you not like it. So we got to make a choice. And we say, look, I don't want it to bring destruction into my life. In the book of Acts, the Bible says in Ephesus that they brought the stuff out of their homes and they burn it. And in today's society, that would have been worth uh, expensive. I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So they got rid of it. They just burn it. They, they, they said, no, we're not going to have anything to do with it. And, and it's, it, so we have to look and say, is there some stuff working in my home? Do, do I have some stuff that is in my home? And, and if this stuff is happening, then you know what? We need to get it out. We need to get it out. We need to... Uh, we need to say, hey, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to have a part of that in my house. And, and let me add something. I put a little side note here as well. If you have something in your house and it seems to be uh, satanic or it's occultish or whatever it is, don't get, don't get rid of it and give it to somebody else. When you get rid of it, throw it away. Don't give it to somebody. Don't say, well, I'm not going to deal with it, but I'll let you deal with it. No, you, you need to just get rid of it. Because here's what I found, and I taught this years ago. If you go through your homes, if we went through our homes, every one of us started to go through our homes, we might get to looking and we might find some books, we might find some movies that's just got some stuff in it that's been brought into our homes and we don't even realize how destructive it is, but we brought it in our homes and now all of a sudden we're seeing things happen. And so the enemy comes in when we open the door. And we don't even know it's there, but we got to get it out. Again, I'm talking about self-defense. I'm talking about defending your family. I'm talking about this is real. I've seen it happen. And so I want to help you tonight. The, the enemy comes in and you say, pastor, if, 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 because I've heard parents say this, pastor, if I get rid of that, my kids are going to get upset. Let me do a little parenting for you. First of all, your kids need to get upset at you sometime. I mean, they do. They need to get upset at you sometime. And here's what will happen. If you don't get them upset because of something that's in your house that shouldn't be there, then guess what? There's going to come a day that you're going to be the one that's going to be upset. And so we got to take a stand. So the apostle Paul, he's not willing. He, he said, I know she's saying, she's really giving us a, some, some, a, a great commercial, but, but I'm not willing to let the enemy do this, even in a positive way. I'm, I'm not going to let the enemy speak for me. And, and so Paul didn't stand for it because he knew that if he allowed that, then he was giving place to the enemy. There are movies my wife and I won't watch. We won't watch. 
The R-rated movie, we will not watch. It doesn't matter. You say, it's a good movie. I don't care how good it is. We won't watch it. And some of them now, PG, we're getting where we won't even watch those either. In fact, G is almost getting bad. And you say, well, that's crazy. Maybe it is. But for us, we're saying, no, we're not going to open that door. We just refuse to open that door. We say, no, it's not going to happen. And so we have to just say, look, I'm not going to give place to the enemy. I'm trying to help you self-defense that you can do naturally. There's some things you can do naturally with that. Galatians 5, 19 through 21 says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So these are the works of the flesh. And if we allow the works of the flesh to operate in our life, what I just read, it just told us, then we're putting ourselves in a place of destruction. It's in the book and we do that. And so God says, don't allow this to happen. Don't, don't do this in your life. And, and let me take it a step farther. And, and, and again, just let me throw it out here. Be careful of the video games you let in your house. Make sure you're not allowing destruction to be brought in. Make sure and be careful. In Mark 11, Jesus is walking along. Very familiar passage. Disciples are with him. He comes to a fig tree, and he's going to get something to eat. He's thinking, well, I'm going to grab me a fig. I'm I'm going to eat something. And when he goes to do it, there were no figs. There was nothing there for him to eat. Jesus walked away, and he made this statement. He said, never again shall anyone eat from this tree. So they go away. They come back the next day, and Peter looks at the tree, and the tree's dead. It's dead. There's a couple of things we can extract out of this. One one is this. The tree was not dead, but it wasn't producing. (laughs) So you can be alive and not produce. Which Jesus said, hey, you might as well be dead. And so Peter comes in, the tree's dead. And he's looking at it and he's thinking, Peter looks at Jesus and he said, man, the tree is dead. And Jesus goes into this thing and he says, if you believe and confess. Now, as I got to looking at this and I began thinking about it, I thought, if he could speak death into that tree, why didn't he speak life? Why didn't he, why didn't he speak life? Why didn't he, he just say, uh, there's going to be fruit on the tree. And then the next day they come back and it's hanging heavy with all kinds of fruit. I mean, he could have said that. He could have said it's going to fall to the ground because there's going to be so much fruit on it. And, 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 but everything that Jesus did, he was teaching his apostles something. He was saying, I want you to learn. He, he was teaching so we could read about it later. Because he knew we would be reading about it. Here's what I believe. When Jesus did that, he was showing the disciples how powerful their words were. Just by what come out of their mouth. That when, you know what, you speak blessings, blessings come. When you speak cursings, guess what? Cursings come. See, See, I'm a firm believer that there's power in the tongue. And I really believe your words are important. I believe it's something that you say, and if you're not careful, that you can speak bad things and you can speak curses. And so you got to be careful. And, and, and in fact, let me go a little bit farther. It wouldn't surprise me that this week, even this week, I guarantee you within the last two weeks, but even this week, that someone has spoken curses over my life. i got a lot of people that don't like me. And it wouldn't surprise me if this week, if I was somehow could find out that people had spoken or a person had spoken curses over my life. And guess what? It's the same as witchcraft operating in my life because they have spoken that. Probably some of you. 
There's probably some of you and you don't even realize it and you were just going along and everything was fine and then all of a sudden things just started happening, man. It, it, things start breaking things, and you're like, what in the world is going on? Well, here's the thing. There's power in the words that are spoken over your life. Jesus showed us in this power, powerful parable. He said, look, whenever you speak to something and so there is power when somebody speaks something over your life, Jesus goes on to say, therefore I say to you, whatever thing you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And, and so he says, guys, if I want the tree to die, then what I'm going to do is there's so much power in what I say. And, and he said, I'll just say that I want it to die. And he said, here's the thing. You've got the same power in you. You've got that same thing. And so the people we encounter have that same power. They can speak those things. And you say, Pastor, you mean to tell me that I could be under a curse? That Yeah, I, I'm telling you that. Well, I don't care, Pastor. I believe that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I do too. But hear me, you can still be under a word curse from somebody. It's not whether or not Jesus is greater than the devil. We know that he is. That's not the problem. The Old Testament says where there is no cause that the curse cannot alight without a cause. So we first have to check ourselves. Did I open a door? Is there something that, that see, because we don't talk about it. Nobody ever talks about this. And, and so we have to ask ourselves, did I open a door? Is there something that I hope that did I open? Did I not close a door? Is there a door I didn't close? Is it, I mean, and, and then we realize, okay, it's not anything I've done. I, I don't know. Then it's something that has come against us. And when we realize this, hear me, you got to reverse the curse. Some of y'all need to do this. P pray about it. Every, you know what I pray over this house? We come in here and pray. And one of my prayer is God. Every curse that is spoken over this building, Lord, I ask you to just remove the curse and I speak blessings over this place. I do it every day. I, I say, God, I speak blessings. Because you know what? I refuse to let somebody bring something on me or something on this church that will cause destruction because I'm not willing to fight to get it out of my own life. And so I just stand and say, it's not going to happen. And, and so it's hard for us to believe, but, but I've talked about it many times. And I want to share this. And when he's here, you can ask him. Pastor Eddie, that, that was raised in Africa, and I've talked to him many times, he literally saw witch doctors curse people and they die just by what they said. He saw it happen. He saw, he saw that happen, and, and you said, man, I don't know. It, it's it's kind of like, like, like telling somebody that, that about snow that has never seen snow. And they say, I don't believe it. I've never seen it. I don't believe it. I don't think it really happens. But you know what? I know it exists. Why? Because I've seen it. I've played in it. I've slid off the road in it. I've done all those things. I, I know that it does exist. I, I know. No It ma doesn't matter what they say just because they say, well, I never saw it, I, so I don't believe it. Okay, there's some things I never saw, but I believe it. I believe that there is power in the tongue. I believe those things happen. And so I believe that the church nowadays needs to get their head out of the sand. And I'm talking about churches everywhere, especially in America. Maybe, maybe really, maybe it is what the Bible's talking about, that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Maybe there is spirit powers. Maybe there is principalities and rulers of darkness that we are up at. Maybe, maybe the fight really is legit a spiritual battle. Maybe we ought to take up the shield of faith like I talked last week. Maybe we ought to do the sword of the spirit. Maybe, maybe we ought to put on the belt of truth. Maybe we ought to wake up and we let faith operate in our life. Maybe we ought to try these things. And I'm talking about self-defense. Maybe we ought to put on the helmet of salvation. Maybe we ought to protect our mind when, when we've done all the stand. Maybe we ought to just stand. Maybe I don't get it, but maybe I ought to just stand and say, you know what, with all prayer and supplication, I, I'm just standing. I don't understand but I stand Amen. it's a crazy thought but it's biblical it's biblical 
and I'm just throwing this out for thought, maybe there's a reason why you're always sick. Maybe there's a reason. There, there might be a reason you're going through oppression or depression. Maybe you're operating under a spiritual curse. Maybe somebody has spoke something into your life. And, and again, when, when those that are in authority, hear, hear me, when those that are in that kind of authority over your life speak negative things on you, that's the same as a witch or a sorcerer. And the enemy comes in because he has been given legal right in your life. And if you don't stand up and rebuke it, the enemy is going to play havoc in your life. I'll never have somebody speak a negative thing into me and me not stand, stand up and say, I don't receive that. I'm teaching you how to self-defense. Well, I tell you what, I just see destruction in your future. Well, I tell you what, I don't see that. I see blessings in my future and therefore I don't receive that because they are speaking a curse over my life and I'm not going to receive that. I'm not going to, and so I'm going to reverse the curse. I'm going to say, no, that doesn't happen. The, the reason I think that a lot of folks don't stand up and fight is because they don't know how. And so tonight I'm going to show you. I want to show you because this is real and I want to show you how to fight it. And again, I, it's just a few quick things. When, when people in authority speak things over you, th there's a spiritual dynamic that takes place that we don't even understand. We don't understand it, but they're, they're in authority. That's why whenever I'm speaking a word to people, I'll never speak a negative thing to you. I'm never going to speak something negative over you. I want to speak blessings over you. You know what? I've prophesied over a lot of people in 21 years. And I have never one time had God give me a prophetic word to give people that tore them down. Never have. It's always to build them up. It's always to strengthen them. And so there's a spiritual dynamic when people speak over you. Here's how powerful it was in the Bible. God stood the children of Israel between two mountains. And he said, you know what? I'm going to give you a mountain of blessings and I'm going to give you a mountain of cursings. I'm going to give you both. There they are. Now he said, he, he began to list the blessings and the cursings. And he said, if you follow me, here's what's going to happen. And if you don't follow me, he said, here's the things that's going to come upon you. And so God said, I'm going to symbolize it by two mountains. And so when you have people, and I said this a while ago, starting to speak things against you, you start speaking things back to it. You say, that's rude. That's fine. I'll be rude. If somebody's going to have enough about them to speak negative things into me, I'm going to look at them, and I'm going to speak right back at them. Because you ain't going to put something on me or my family. I've worked too hard. I've done too much. You guys have worked too hard to let somebody come in with just a little word and just say something. You've worked too hard for where you're at. And you say, uh-uh. You know, it's just like if they come up and mouth your kids. Jennifer, if somebody come up and mouth your kids, they wouldn't see for two or three weeks probably because their eyes would be swollen shut. You know what? We need to look, we need to approach that way when people speak negativity, not box them or anything like that. But, but we need to look at them and say, oh, wait a minute. We don't receive that. Well, according to God's word, I don't, I'm not receiving that. And so we have to do it. The Bible says salvation comes not with your mind, but by your confession. So here, here's how you combat against it. You, you, hear me. You need to start praying out loud. That's why I say open your mouth. Pray, pray out loud. If you're in your car, start praying out loud. Just, just start speaking out loud. Pray out loud. And, and start coming against the stuff out loud. God, right now, I speak over my house, and Lord, this sickness has to leave. I don't know what's caused it. I don't know what's brought it, but God, I just declare wellness over this house. I declare healing over this house, and Lord, I just say right now, you come into this place, and you heal this place. Speak it. Say it out loud. Again, th this is how you're, you're, you're using self-defense. Again, that's biblical. 
We don't like to touch it because we say, oh, that's weird. No, that's biblical. Let me take it a step far. Be careful who you allow to pray over you. That's why I don't want any, just anybody praying over people. You got to be careful who you allow. Oh, it doesn't matter. No, it matters. Be careful who you allow to give you a word. Oh, it's no big deal. You know what? I've had people go places and get a word and it takes me months to clean it back up and help them get through it because of the stupidity that they were given the word of. So you be careful. You, you, you know what? I, it's got to be somebody I know. It's got to be somebody that I know uh, uh, that, that I know their spiritual walk. I, you got to be careful when they do that. Another thing, don't chase prophetic. Well, this prophetic person's going to be here and this one's going to be here. Don't chase that. D don't chase after that. A again, especially if you don't know who's given the prophecy. Self-defense. Self-defense. The Bible says, know them that labor among you. So you got to know them. You got to be careful and not let them speak de destructive things over your life and you not do anything about it. You got to fight it. You got to fight it. Let's, let's stand. I, I want to close with this. Parents, I need you to hear me. Grandparents as well, but really parents. Be careful what you say about your kids. Be careful about what you, what you say about your kids. I tell you what, this this kid, you're talking to somebody like this, I don't know if they'll ever amount to anything. Don't say that about your kid. Don't say that. You speak life over them. You, you speak, I'm going to speak something I can live with. Don't let anybody else speak that over your kids. Speak great. Oh, they're, they're just bad kids. No, they might do bad things, but they're not bad kids. I see my kids becoming prosperous. I see them being blessed. I see their kids being blessed. And see what I'm saying? You begin to speak those things over them. Our words, and I talk about this all the time, but it's so important. Our words are so powerful. They're so powerful. We've all said things. We've all, we've all said things that were not good things, and we need to break it. We need to quit doing that. We need to say, wait a minute. You know, as the old saying says, if you don't have good, nothing good to say, don't say anything. Because there's also a scripture that says you reap what you sow. And so you got to have self-defense. This day and time we're living in, you got to defend your family. You got to stand up for them. You got to say, I'm going to make sure that I'm not, I'm not allowing any open doors. I got to make sure that, that I'm not got something. And I didn't even mean to. I remember Pastor Eddie, they, they had been to Africa and they got a trinket of some kind. And they brought it home. And for some reason, normally they pray over them and things and they didn't. And, and he said, man, things just start happening. And he said, it was the craziest thing. And he said, we got to thinking, what have we brought in? What have we, and he said, we got to thinking about that thing. And he said, we got it out of the house. We prayed over it. We, and, and they ended up getting rid of it. And he said, everything shifted. He, he said, oh, I don't know. Ask him. I'm telling you, it's real. It's real. I'm not, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just saying it's real. I'm trying to give you self-defense of where you say, look, I'm not opening the door for any of that stuff to come in. And so I want to pray over you tonight. I want, here's what I want you to do. <clears throat> if you have family here, I, I want you to stand by your family. 
I, I want you to stand by your family. Find your family, whatever family, let's do that. If you don't have family, join up with a family. Join up with a family. I don't want anybody standing alone. Join up with your family. Join up. Come on. Don't, don't stand alone. Come on. We got family. And so I want to pray over them. I want to pray over your, the family. Because the enemy wants your family. Look, look at me, parents. The enemy wants your kids. He wants them. And he will stop short of nothing at getting them. He wants your kids. Grandparents, he wants your grandkids. He wants the next generation. Gabe Kaylee, the enemy wants that baby and it's not even born yet. He wants it. He's not going to get it. See, because we're fighting. He's not going to get my granddaughter. He's not going to get my kids. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I'll take everything out of my house. There won't even be a stick of furniture in there if I have to. Because I'm serious about this. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have give this to you. This is not one that I love to deliver. I love to jump and scream and all that stuff, get everybody excited. I, but th this is something that God said, teach them. Teach them. Let them know. And so I want to pray, and I want you to join me. And I'm going to pray over families. And I'm going to pray that word curses are broken. They can't stay on your family. And we're just going to speak blessings. And I urge you to do that every day. Every day we do that. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. Lord, I thank you for every family that is represented. And Lord, even those that couldn't be here tonight, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for the family. I thank you, Lord, that we can come together. And Lord, tonight, as we have learned the last couple weeks on self-defense, Lord, Lord, as I stand as pastor tonight, Lord, I just declare over every family that is represented that every word curse be broken. Lord, things that might have been said, things that have been spoken against any of them, Lord, I declare it broken. I speak blessings over their homes. Lord, everyone that is here tonight, I speak blessings. The one that are, ones that are in LTK tonight, I speak blessings over their home. Lord, anything that, Lord, any of us have opened the door for, for the enemy to have a way in, Lord, I just pray that we close that door. And Lord, that you just help us to do that. And Lord, help us to be well aware. Help us to learn. Lord, help us to put on the armor of God. Lord, help us to speak your word. Lord, help us declare over our families, Lord, speak against any word curse that has been said. And so, Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you have equipped us, Lord, that you have given us self-defense. So, Lord, tonight we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. All the family said amen. All right. You, you are now equipped. You are equipped to fight the things of the enemy. I want to thank you so much for being here tonight.